Once one of America's top Republicans, Lawrence King is serving a 15-year prison sentence for a multi-million dollar fraud. But financial crime is only half the story. This is the true story of Lawrence King. It is the story of a cancer at the heart of America and of its continuing cover-up at the highest level. One man is attempting to uncover the full story. John DeCamp is among the most highly decorated Vietnam veterans. A former Republican state senator in Lincoln, Nebraska, he is now a lawyer fighting the legacy of Lawrence King's abuse of power. It's a web of intrigue that starts in our holy of holies, Boys Town, Nebraska, one of the most respected institutions in the United States, and spreads out like a spider web to Washington, D.C., right up to the steps of the nation's capital, the steps of the White House, involves some of the most respected and powerful and richest businessmen in this United States of America. And the centerpiece of the entire web is the use of children for sex and drug dealing and drug couriers, the compromising of politicians, the compromising of businessmen, but worst of all, the corruption of key institutions of government that have the duty and responsibility to make sure these things never happen. For John DeCamp, the trail starts in a unique town just outside Omaha. World famed Boys Town is in the news again. Made famous by an Oscar winning film, Boys Town is America's favorite children's charity. It was founded in 1917 by a Catholic priest, Father Flanagan. Father Flanagan, the saddest spectacle in our social life is a neglected, unwanted, and unloved boy who has become a serious problem in our society. Well, this town was started to be a uh, home for orphans. It was after World War I. And uh, since then, society has changed, and the problems of boys have changed. And so now, uh, it's a question of taking care of uh, homeless, uh, abandoned, neglected, uh, abused boys and now girls also. Boys Town has been granted the privileges of an incorporated town, a Catholic diocese, and a school district for 500 children. Boys Town has cash reserves of $500 million, but still raises up to $35 million annually, solicited from the public by begging letters and promotional videos. I'm Father Val Peter, the caretaker of Father Flanagan's dream and the executive director of Boys Town. Does Boys Town really exist, people ask me? You bet it does. Located in the heartland of America, Boys Town youth have come from many backgrounds and locales. As they graduate, they shall seek new adventures and head for different places. But always, they shall carry with them the spirit of Boys Town. If you'd like to help Boys Town, send your tax-deductible gift to Father Val Peter, Boys Town, Nebraska, 68010. Boys Town, for me, was the first thing I ever heard of when you think of institutions that you respect. Believe it or not, I was there for a while when I was a young boy. When an institution like that gets contaminated, then you'd better, if you've got any decency at all, uh, do something about it or, or at least get it cleared up. John DeCamp lays the blame for the contamination of Boys Town on the one-time leader of the National Black Republican Council, Larry King. Larry King was the fastest rising black star in the entire Republican Party of the United States during all of the 1980s. And he was also one of the most evil individuals in this country in terms of being a dealer of children, in terms of being a thief, 40 million that they documented he stole, and in terms of using and compromising and corrupting one after another politicians. The base for his network was the Franklin Federal Credit Union, a people's bank in Omaha, Nebraska. Larry King was its general manager. Thank you. 
this is especially an exciting day for me. Mr. King was a very charismatic person. When he came to the credit union, he was brought in because the credit union was actually failing. He did everything to build the credit union. King called to the leaders at Omaha's wealthy business district. Banks, industry, and charities placed millions of dollars in King's hands. From 1979, Larry King developed close commercial ties to Boystown, and Boystown youngsters were sent to work for his companies. Boystown had quite a few accounts at Franklin Credit Union. Those were considered very valuable accounts. They were handled exclusively by the bookkeeping department. But on the average of once a month or once every two months, we always seem to incorporate a person from Boys Town. But King used Boys Town not just as a source of young boys for his business. He prostituted them at sex and drug orgies. Paul Benassi was a victim of King's abuse. He was also sent by King to lure Boys Town youngsters off campus. We used to just drive around and go toward a home with some of these two, with some of the uh, scavenger hunts with picking up some of the kids. You know, just kind of win their confidence, become friends with them for a while. Start inviting them to the parties. The kids were 10 years old or older. In 1986, King's plundering of Boys Town was reported by staff to its chief executive, Father Val Peter. Subsequent testimony proves that he carried out his own investigation but that King's victims refused to talk to him. Monsignor Hupp now blames himself for Boys Town's association with Larry King. Well, in retrospect, I uh, regret having any association with uh, uh, Larry King. Uh, had I known it at the time, it would never have happened. Could you understand why a very detailed report from a social worker employed at Boys Town identifying children and identifying their alleged abusers never saw the light of day nothing happened with that no i can understand that because i know that had been i wouldn't put up with that but uh is that something like that happened i don't know nebraska has a very clear statute that child abuse allegations should be reported to authorities they shouldn't be reported to the principal of the school director of a facility they should be reported directly to either Child Protective Services or law enforcement. And so Larry King remained free to feed his pedophilic parties with child victims. But in 1988, a routine review brought King's involvement with Boys Town Youth to the attention of Nebraska's State Foster Care Review Board. And the information presented to the Foster Care Review Board, either via the telephone reports, the personal reports, or the reports we reviewed, uh, Larry King's name was consistently present as someone that the youth were making allegations against. I would say we handed over at least a foot high um, amount of material to authorities, and nothing happened. Omaha police now accept that Larry King may have been abusing children. Good morning, Roberta but its most senior officer claims the evidence was not conclusive. It is certainly possible that Mr. King was involved in illegal acts with children. If there was sufficient evidence, evidence of those types of allegations, he would have been prosecuted by the county attorney's office. For me, it was very